Good day, this is Jim Bytel from Columbia Gorge Community College. This is Digital Electronics. This lecture is entitled Digital Analog Conversion Methods, R to R Ladder Method. In our last discussion about digital to analog conversion, we made use of the binary weighted input circuit, which I've drawn right here. As easy as it was to understand the binary weighted input circuit, uh, there becomes a problem with it because notice those resistors. R, 2R, 4R, 8R, they're not exactly the most scalable methods. For example, if I wanted to expand this to a fifth bit position, D4 would have R, D3 would have 2R, D2 would have 4R, D1 would have 8R, D0 would have 16R. So for me to expand a bit position, I've got to do some fundamental change of those inputs. Additionally, think about the manufacturability of all these things. Are resistors of those values even commercially available? Is there an 8R value? Is there a 16R value? Is there 3,228 times that? So get the picture as you're using a huge selection of resistors to actually perform this. Compare and contrast to what we're just about to discuss here, the R to R ladder method. I'm discussing this circuit right here. You can optionally take that resistive ladder and feed it into an amplifier, uh, which we'll talk about in a little bit here. But an R2R does not necessarily need that amplifier right now. As confusing as this circuit may look here, notice I'm only using two values, namely R, and as the name implies, 2R. And additionally, notice the functional units that these things are composed of. Look at this repetitive 2RR L shape, 2RR, 2RR, the only difference being this 2R, 2R at the very end. It stands to conjecture if I wanted to perhaps expand to a fourth bit position, all I'd have to do is put in that 2RR network at fifth bit position, excuse me, six bit positions, so on and so forth. You're expanding those functional blocks using the same resistive values. And that's exactly how it happens. The binary weighted method here, basically how we did this was the lowest significant bit contributed less. The, may, uh, the most significant bit contributed more. Exact same thing for the resistive ladder network here. How we do that, though, is kind of different. It's through this voltage division. Notice my output voltage is right there. And for D0 to contribute anything, it's got to go through one stage, two stage, three stages, four stages to get to that output. Okay, And each time, it's successfully being divided. Okay, successively being divided. And notice, however, D3 only has to go through one stage of voltage division for it to do so. And the reason why I'm saying it's optional to put an amplifier there at the end is this will this circuit here will perform and there will be an analog, a single analog voltage if we put in a parallel binary value. However, it's limited to that range of that logic level. If we wanted to somehow step it up and down or down, you know, perhaps we want to amplify or attenuate it, we could use an operational amplifier at the very end end and adjust the gain with this feedback resistor. So let's go ahead and perform a quick analysis on the R2R ladder network. And what you'll find is you're going to be making use of Thevenin's theorem. Okay, so I know a cold chill ran down some of y'all's spine there. Yes, you're going to have to use some of your basic understandings of electronics to understand this. It's not that hard, though, because of its repetitive functional unit nature, namely this 2R, R combination. And what you try to do is basically take your basic resistive network and give it these divisions right there, right there, and another one right there. What does Thevenin's theorem states is basically I can take the open circuit voltage and the resistance with the, the voltage source removed and replace it with the voltage equivalent and a resistor in series. So what we can do is, is kind of analyze each stage and see what contributes there. So for example, D0. Think about from the perspective of D0. And all I've done between this top diagram here is all I did was just shift that one down ever so slightly. From the perspective of D0, it is being voltage divided between two identical resistances, 2R, 2R. Say, for example, D0 was a logical value of 5 volts. What's the open circuit voltage there? Well, it should be 5 volts divided by 2, so 2.5 two volts. Okay, so we've already performed a division of that. What is the Thevenin equivalent resistance at that point? Well, we remove that source, and what you get is basically two R's in parallel which is this single R value here. 
and notice what it's setting us up for. It's setting us up for two R's in series. What is two R's in series? Well, it's two R. And if we perform again a Thebanin's equivalent, we're going to have two R in parallel with two R. So that's our first step. We've combined our two R's in series to get this guy. Then we've got two R's in parallel to get an R this R. Two R's in series make, you guessed it, two R. In parallel, you get the picture here, is basically we're performing this repetitive analysis over and over. Ultimately, what we can get is basically the Thevenin's equivalent resistance for the whole network is R, regardless of how many stages you've gone through there. So this could potentially simplify all your filtration for any stage. Your circuit's impedance is R, regardless of the number of the bits. And along the way, we could have been doing that Thevenin's equivalent open circuit voltage for the contribution in this particular case of D0. And what happens is basically we saw in the first stage, you got it reduced by a half. What's going to happen in the second stage? Half again. Third stage, half again. Fourth stage, half again. What do we got here? Basically, the output voltage is D0 divided by 16. You get the picture here. It's contributing a 16th of it. And we do the same thing for D1 where it's an eighth, D2, a fourth, and finally D3, a half. And in the case of a 5-volt TTL system, basically the D0 bit can contribute 0.3125 volts, D1 can contribute 0.625 volts, D2 can contribute 1.25 volts, D3 can contribute 2.5 volts. Basically, our final range should be 4.6875 volts. And the reason why it's shy of 5 volts is because think about it, we are using 16 bit positions to represent that range there, one of which quadruple zero is being used to represent zero. So it's basically we can represent this in steps of a 16th of 5 volts, which is 0.3125, our LSB. Okay, so that's our minimum resolution right there. Okay, in the case where we wanted to go ahead and amplify this thing, that's when that output stage, V0, is being fed into this operational amplifier in the lower right-hand corner there to potentially expand that range to a higher voltage or perhaps attenuate it to a smaller voltage. So let's go ahead and just do an example here. Let's say, for example, we've got the bits, let's say we're going to say 1, 0, 1, 1, that being D3, D2, D1, D0. In the case of a 5-volt system, what do we have here for our analog output voltage? And your answer for the combination 1, 0, 1, 1 should be 3.4375 volts analog equivalent. So and again, we should be able to vary this thing very similar to our last method of the binary weighted input. We should see a linear relationship developing. In this particular case, we've got a much smaller resolution than our last value. But again, be aware that our range is limited to, in this case, up to just shy of 5 volts. So the R to R resistor ladder, it's simple, effective, accurate, and above all, an expensive, inexpensive way to create analog data from digital input. These resistive networks, you know, they're sometimes monolithic. They could be produced in mass and monolithic, a single layer or a single piece. They are semiconductor devices that can be easily manufactured over and over. And again, you just go ahead and expand that out if you continually want to add more to this. You know, for example, a five bit network D0 would be D0 divided by 32, D1 divided by 16, D2 divided by 8, D3 divided by 4, excuse me, D4 divided by 2. So you can potentially expand these networks. Okay, uh, this concludes the R2R resistive ladder network for digital analog conversion.